Good evening, everyone. It is Tuesday, March 22nd. We're here in the Midwest, in the Chicago area, and the barometric pressure is dropping 29.71. It's going to be dropping more. It's expected to drop to very close to 29.4 as we head into the overnight hours. As this low pressure system pulls away, something unique is going to be happening. Usually when a low pressure system pulls away, colder air moves into the Chicago area, but not this time around. This time around, we're going to have warmer air before the colder air moves in. The front is positioned in a, uh, in a much further back on the clock. If you were to imagine the low pressure system as the air surrounding it, it moves counterclockwise. And that cold front usually is pretty close to the center of the low pressure, but this time the cold front is further back. Uh, The warm front is going to first move through, followed by the cold front. We have temperatures which are 70 degrees above normal in the South Pole, by the way. Antarctica is reporting temperatures of about 10 degrees. Normal is 50 below zero. We have temperatures about 50 degrees above normal in the North Pole. And areas which got snow have received substantially uh, large amounts above normal. 42 inches of snow is on the ground in Anchorage, Alaska, reports meteorologist Tom Skilling. We have two different types of gases, really more than that, but let's just talk about the two. We have the greenhouse gases and we have the aerosols. Some of the aerosols produce global cooling. They also could deplete the ozone. It's always been a question, uh, it used to always be a question of which gas, both of these are being produced by man and also being produced by nature. The question is, which gas is going to be the winner? Which one is going to have more of an effect on our weather? That was a question in the 1960s and 1970s. If the answer is aerosol, we're going to see global cooling. Initially, it seemed like that was going to be the answer, of, according to some scientists. But by the mid-1970s, really by the time the global cooling theory became popular... The majority of scientists already were starting to feel that actually the greenhouse gases were going to be the winner. And it seemed like that is what has been happening. Up until now, the greenhouse gases has been the winner. And as a result, generally speaking, we're, we have been seeing global warming. There have been a few cycles within the global warming years where... We saw cooling, temperatures went down, especially after 1998. 1998 was a really warm year. Temperatures went drastically down for 1999, and we really never recovered from 1998 in the first 10 years of the 2000s. But after that, uh, temperatures kind of went on par with 1998, and they dropped again. Starting 2016 onward, perhaps even 2015, but more so 2016, that's really when the global warming really took off and 97% of scientists according to the literature seem to agree that we're currently uh, the greenhouse gases are overdoing the they're they're outdoing the aerosol gases and regardless of which gas is outdoing what the what's happening is we're experiencing more extreme events in the world and areas which have especially areas which have hot and humid climates or just hot climates which are not impacted by the jet stream and not impacted certainly by the polar vortex but not even impacted by the jet stream too much those areas which already have deadly heat those areas are seeing an increase in temperatures especially india and that's where we have really almost like an immediate threat to life and to life Uh, because of this global warming. The question is, Does is the past a good indicator of the future? Greenhouse gases have been increasing up until now. Not only have the greenhouse gases been increasing, but the greenhouse gases have been outnumbering the aerosol. Does that, just because it's been like that up until now, does that mean it's going to continue to be like that? Of course the answer is no. It doesn't mean that. But, because we don't know the future, there's 
nuclear war, God forbid, that produces an enormous amount of global cooling. In fact, some say even a minor nuclear weapon that's used could produce 10 consecutive summers, 10 consecutive years without a summer. The last time we had a year without a summer uh, worldwide was 1992. The Midwest received a year without a summer, the two summers of 2013 and 2014. This was mostly felt in the southern Midwest because those are the locations that generally receive a hot and humid summer for temperatures to be many days in the 70s and not the 90s is clearly felt in places like St. Louis, Missouri. But 1992, even the upper Midwest felt the lack of summer as snow flurries were reported in June in Wisconsin. So what do we do about global warming? There's many different things that could be done. One thing is, I think it's been tried and people are scared to do it. That's what's happening here, is to send aircraft into the stratosphere and release chemicals over there, certain types of aerosols or even salt. That would produce global cooling, and that would counteract the greenhouse gases. There's a number of other things that could be done as well, but that one is the most efficient way of dealing with it, and the scientific, you know, scientists have agreed to this, but it's scary. It's scary stuff. We don't know what effect that's going to have, especially on the ozone. We don't really know. So the world has chosen to take probably the most complicated and difficult mahalach here. The most difficult and, and the, the least efficient mahalach, which is to try to reduce the greenhouse gases. These are greenhouse gases which are being produced by people that their livelihood. Some of them, some people are no longer going to have a livelihood after this. Not only that, but this isn't really efficient. Like what? It's just not efficient. The aircraft into the stratosphere will take care of the issue one, two, three, just like that. And if we want to do things right, we want to do a proper hishtadlis here, if we believe in this, so do it right. This isn't, this just isn't going to work to, to impose this on people, to impose all this on people, on mankind, and people are going to lose their livelihood. Personally, I think just leave it alone. Just leave things alone. Volcanoes we've spoken about in the past produce tremendous global cooling. Just leave it alone. Anyways, I wish everybody a good night. Thank you for listening.